Earthquakes, volcanoes, and dry rivers are sending a warning message to all of humanity. And the Euphrates River dried up and earthquake fire is the final warning to humanity. So what terrible event will humanity face? And will God save us from destruction? If you're curious about what you're witnessing, this occurred after the earthquake in Turkey, not far from the Euphrates River. The River Euphrates is highly connected with prophetic events and of the end times. I'm curious to know what is on fire and what's happening here. Unfortunately, I haven't done enough research to understand what that fire is. Nonetheless, it must be frightening for whoever is witnessing this event firsthand because it appears as if the ground has ruptured and fire is emerging from it. For many thousands, this is merely the beginning of their journey of grief. Of coming to terms with profound loss in just a few short minutes, villages have been reduced to rubble, families decimated and landscapes obliterated as far as the eye can see. Children have been orphaned and mothers left childless. The tragic death of footballer Christian Atsu is a reminder that every person buried beneath the rubble has a face and a name. Act of God? When a natural disaster strikes, all kinds of questions can arise. If God exists, then why did this happen? Some argue that such widespread and needless suffering surely goes against the grain of belief in a God who claims to be good and has power over the forces of nature. Other kinds of large-scale disaster, such as the devastation and trauma wreaked by wars and conflict around the world, are no less easy to watch. But, at their heart, they are less complicated to explain. People can be cruel to each other and are capable of unspeakable violence. The one-year anniversary of the start of the Russian invasion of Ukraine is a stark reminder that human beings use their freedom for good and ill. But catastrophes such as earthquakes are different. Natural disasters seem to happen in spite of humans, not because of them. Our insurance policies protect us against acts of God. Is this what they are? But what kind of God sanctions an earthquake? Surely not one worth pondering. If God has the power to part the seas and calm storms, then surely he could stop them from happening, or better still, create a planet without them altogether. As you all know, we always keep things biblical on this channel and dive into scripture. So let's find out why this event is significant. If you take a glance at the screen, you'll see the precise locations of the earthquakes and their magnitudes. The 7.8 magnitude earthquake above or to the left of Gaziantep was the first to occur. The second earthquake, which was a 7.5 magnitude, happened a bit up to the right of Gaziantep. Now let's fly over to the Euphrates River using Google Earth. This used to be one of my favorite softwares back in the day. If you look down here, you'll see the most well-known portion of the Euphrates River located in Iraq. The Euphrates River flows through three countries, Iraq, Syria, and Turkey. This is where the earthquakes took place in Turkey. The river Euphrates originates from the mountains of East Anatolia, located in Turkey. It flows southeastward through the country, forming part of its eastern border with Syria. In Syria, the river flows from north to south and is an essential source of water for agriculture and industry. It then flows down into Iraq, continuing its journey south and eventually meets the Tigris River in the southeast to form the Shat al-Arab, which flows into the Persian Gulf. This bit about the Persian Gulf isn't relevant, but what is significant is the size of this river. Even from up high, you can see how enormous it is. I would like to draw your attention to chapter 16, verse 12 in the book of Revelation, which reads, And the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates, and the water thereof was dried up, that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. It goes on to say, And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon, and out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. The Bible predicts that in the last days, the Euphrates River will dry up to prepare the way for the kings of the east to pass through. The river itself is a massive land barrier that would hinder any army from advancing east to west. At more than 1,800 miles long and an average of 300 yards wide, the Euphrates River has been a substantial source of life in the region. The sixth angel poured out his bowl on the great river Euphrates, and its water was dried up to prepare the way for the kings from the east. Revelation 16.12 the Bible doesn't say who the kings of the East are, and biblical scholars and theologians have different ideas about who they are. 
One popular interpretation is that the kings of the East are a reference to the rise of China and other Asian nations as powerful political and economic entities. John predicts in Revelation 9, 16 through 18, that these kings of the East will boast a standing army of 200 million. This is a bold prophecy, especially when you consider that at the time he was writing, there weren't 200 million people on the planet. However, as you read this today, China has an army of more than 200 million, just as the Bible predicted. It's also worth noting that, whatever the kings of the East are, they are seen as a formidable force in the end times and are going to be a part of the final battles that will take place before the return of Jesus. Either way, this massive army will need to cross the Euphrates on their way to the Valley of Armageddon. Let us move on to verse 14, for it speaks of the evil spirits working miracles that go forth unto the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of the great day of God Almighty. You may have seen images of the great river Euphrates drying up, which is prophesied in the book of Revelation. This leads us to the main point of this video, which is found in Revelation 16.12, where it says that the kings of the east might be prepared. The drying up of the water of the great river Euphrates will prepare the way for the kings of the east to come towards the west. The Bible is not just a book, it is reality, and it has never been wrong. The kings of the east could refer to countries such as Iran, Armenia, Azerbaijan, and Georgia but who they are is up for interpretation. The three unclean spirits like frogs mentioned in verse 14 could represent their ability to capture things with their tongues. We must remember that the Bible is the truth and not just a theory. Mysterious and enigmatic tales have circulated about strange sightings and peculiar occurrences in certain caves, even among soldiers. Although I strive to keep my channel factual and grounded, I have come across a video on this topic. However, since I have not found concrete evidence, I have not made a video about it. If anyone has footage of the alleged encounter with an unidentified being and soldiers, please feel free to send it to my email. Nonetheless, that is not the main point of this video. Instead, I want to draw your attention to the drying up of the Euphrates River, as it leads to the core topic of discussion. As the body of the Messiah, we must be united and support each other. Therefore. I urge you to share your thoughts on the next point. In Revelation 16:12, the sixth angel pours out a vial upon the Euphrates River, causing its water to dry up, preparing the way for the kings of the east. Furthermore, three unclean spirits resembling frogs emerge from the mouth of the dragon, the beast, and the false prophet. These spirits, the spirits of devils, go forth and gather the kings of the earth and the whole world to the battle of the great day of God Almighty. I wish to focus on verse 12, where the kings of the east are prepared through the drying up of the Euphrates River. Regardless of whether you believe the vial has been poured out or not, let me know in the comment section below. The book of Revelation is not just a book of mere conjecture, but a reality that people must acknowledge. The kings of the east are located over here, as we can see in Google Earth, which is one of my favorite apps. As the river Euphrates dries up, there will be a way for the kings of the east to move westward. Now, the question I pose to you is, who are the kings of the east? Is it Iran, Armenia, Azerbaijan, or Georgia? Will there be a journey that comes all the way from over here and crosses the river? I am genuinely curious to know your thoughts and beliefs on this matter, which is why I made this video. I want to strengthen your faith and remind you that the Bible is not a mere theory, but a fact. For those of you who are very wise, you may move on to the next point. Who are the three unclean spirits resembling frogs? In my analysis, I look at the reasons why the Most High may have likened certain spirits to animals or beings. For instance, frogs have tongues that protrude from their mouths and can retract objects. We also know that the spirits will come out of the mouth of the dragon. Unfortunately, those who lack the ears to hear and the eyes to see mock the scriptures, saying that a dragon will fly around and release frogs. The speaker shares a mystical interpretation of the book of Revelation, particularly the passage about the unclean spirits like frogs that come out of the mouth of the dragon, beast, and false prophet. The speaker believes that the drying up of the Euphrates River will allow the kings of the east to come to battle, and the unclean spirits like frogs will travel the world trying to gather the kings of the earth for the battle of the great day of God Almighty. 
the frogs' tongues represent their attempt to lick and gather the kings of the earth into themselves. The speaker emphasizes the importance of watching and keeping one's garments in preparation for the coming of the Messiah. Gather round, dear ones, and heed my words. This is a sacred space, a place where we can openly discuss and share our thoughts. But let us remember, when we encounter those whose words do not align with our own, we must not attack or mock them. No, let us approach with open hearts and minds, willing to listen and learn, even if we disagree. For the word is a powerful sword, and those who disagree with it are wrong. But be aware, for there are spirits of devils who work miracles to deceive the kings of the earth and the world, leading them to a great battle. Their ways are cunning and deceitful, but fear not, for our Lord and Savior Christ Himself shall emerge victorious. Give your life to Him, believe in His sacrifice on the cross, and you shall enter the kingdom of heaven. Know that you are saved by grace through faith, not by your own works, for this is the truth, and if you love Him, you will keep His commandments. Let us save souls and grow in knowledge and truth together. Join us and hit that thumbs up button, subscribe, and turn on notifications. Blessings to you all.